What better place to celebrate the 4th of July than in America's birthplace on America's birthday? It was right here in Philadelphia on this very spot where the seeds of democracy first took root, where a few heroic deeds forever changed the course of history. The word independence doesn't actually appear in the Declaration, but rather it is titled the Unanimous Declaration of the 13 United States of America. Mid-December 1776, with the British closing in on the city of Philadelphia, the Continental Congress evacuated to Baltimore, and suddenly I found myself responsible for all the incoming and outgoing mail for the delegates. In January 1777, I was tasked with the printing of a priceless parchment. I knew the importance of this sacred document, so at the risk of being labeled a traitor myself, I quickly offered up the services of my press. And on January 31st, 1777, President of the Congress, John Hancock, sent my printed copy, known as the Goddard Broadside, to each one of the United States. It was the second printed, but the first to include the typeset names of the signatories. Also included was one courageous woman. I put my own name, as publisher, at the bottom of the document, making me, in a sense, not just the first, but the only woman signatory. For a time, I was known as Robert Shirtliff. I was the first woman to disguise myself as a man so I could become a soldier. I was 22. I enlisted. On July the 3rd, 1782, I took two musket balls in my thigh. But I was so frightened of being found out, I removed one of the balls myself using a penknife and a sewing needle. But I served 17 months in the army before I was discovered. All men are born free and equal. I was inspired and sought me out a lawyer to sue for my freedom. I told that lawyer. I heard that paper read yesterday, said all men are created equal and every man has a right to freedom. I'm not a dumb critter. Won't the law give me my freedom? I took the name Elizabeth Freeman as a free woman. A lot of people think that I was brave to stand up for myself. But I say, anytime, anytime while I was a slave, if one minute's freedom had been offered to me and I had been told I must die at the end of that minute, I would have taken it, just to stand one minute on God's earth, a free woman. I would. Good evening, and welcome to the judge's house. There came a sound. Got louder, shh, 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 and faster, shh, 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 and he looked around and he couldn't see the rats. They were up in the walls, they were down on the floor, they were everywhere, but he couldn't see them and all of a sudden the noise stopped. Malcolm looked up the rope and he saw this great big rat coming down with those big red eyes looking at him. There's something that you need to know. You're just selfish sometimes, and I don't Ladies, think that you really... excuse me, Kim. Let's lock down the details of this thing. I want to get it going. Hey, it's Kim. Sean and I were having a great time in New Orleans, but she has a problem with boundaries. It hurts a dream when I dream you. I mean, she told some guy she was my manager. I think there's been a misunderstanding. I'm Kim. And I'm Shauna. <laughs> we both love music. And musicians. I've got a blog. And I'm keeping a video diary. I've got this dream of being a singer-songwriter. And I've got a dream 
the best road trip ever. The first thing I, I remember is the big, large wall and a large metal door shutting. I came in in 1988, uh, the day before Thanksgiving. And by the time I got onto the block, it was uh, 6, 7 o'clock in the evening. It was dark, and there were people all over the place. And they opened doors up, and for as far as I could see, it was dark, and there were people. I make 18 cents an hour. Grief, agony, and pain, suffering. And that's what life is in jail is like. I mean, you know what I mean? We could stay clean. You know what I mean? You could read books, but the fact still remains, man, that you're in jail. You can never pursue success in here like you would want to. A man says, I know why the caged bird sings. You know, and it's not a song of joy at all. You know, it's a song of grief and pain, you know, that he sends to God.